Hello you four, welcome to Wednesday's English lesson and today we're thinking about selecting verbs and adverbs which we're going to use in our piece of writing later in the week. So first of all let's remind ourselves that select means to choose and let's remind ourselves what verbs and adverbs are. So a verb is either an action word or a being word and today we're focusing on action words and an adverb describes a verb. So the first thing I want you to do is watch the Spaghetti Tornado video again and we're going to write a list of words. Divide your piece of paper in half and one side we're going to write the list of verbs and the other side we're going to write a list of adverbs. Where are we going to get them from? So when you're watching the video of the Spaghetti Tornado I want you to ask yourself what is the tornado doing and that will give you a list of verbs. So for example, you might see the tornado rotating. So you're going to write rotating. You might see it swirling. So you're going to write swirling. Anything that you see it do, I want you to write it on that list of verbs. And the second question you're going to ask yourself is, how is it doing it? And we're going to create a list of adverbs by asking ourselves that question. So maybe you can see that the tornado is rotating and you're going to say how is it doing it so you might choose the, the adverb violently it's rotating violently you might choose to say that the tornado is rotating rapidly so you're going to have that list of adverbs these will most likely be ly adverbs i've also uploaded a word mat to help you with this so download it from the website and put it in front of you while you do this task you could also use a thesaurus to improve some of your words as you go along, to make them as powerful as you can. So pause this video now and do that. OK, so now we're ready to write sentences. So you're going to write some sentences using the powerful verbs and adverbs that you've chosen. And we're going to challenge ourselves here to vary the order of our sentences. We're still focusing on verbs and adverbs, but we're going to think really hard about how we can put those into the sentences to convey our meaning. So have a look at this one. Spaghetti collects gradually until it forms a tornado. That's the sentence that I could write to describe what's happening in my first box there. Or I could change the order a little bit. Let's read that second one together and I'm going to use the um, sound ch to represent a comma. So I'm going to read that one out now. Gradually, ch spaghetti collects until it forms a tornado. Can you recognise what that sentence is? I'm sure you have. It's a fronted adverbial. So by moving the adverb to the front, it's turned into a fronted adverbial. And why might we do that? Why might we choose this way of writing instead of the top one? Have a think about that question. And maybe you've realised that that, using the adverb at the front, emphasises the adverb. So it makes us really focus on that process happening gradually. So none of these are wrong. Both of these are correct ways to write a sentence and they're both useful in different situations. Or there's one more form that our sentences could take and this is with the verb at the beginning. So let's read this sentence and again we'll use ch to indicate that there is a comma. Combining to form clumps, ch, the spaghetti begins to swirl powerfully. And this form of a verb with ing on the end is called the pre present progressive tense and it tells us what's happening right now. So for this sentence, I've chosen to put that verb first because I want the reader to know that the spaghetti is combining and as it does so, it's beginning to swirl powerfully. So those two things are happening right now. So you might choose to put an ing verb at the start of your sentence to do exactly that, to emphasise the action. Now, I want you to write 10 sentences about your own imaginary weather using verbs and adverbs. So you might want to think back to your plan and think about the different stages of your weather. What happens when it starts? What happens as the process continues? And what happens to cause it to end? 
and I've put a document on the website called a life cycle diagram, which if you want to, you can download and use to draw some pictures on it to help you think about how does your weather start, what does happen in the middle and what happens at the end. And once you've got that really clear in your head, you'll be able to write some sentences using our verbs and adverbs about your weather. So I want you to make sure every single sentence has got one verb and one adverb in it. And I want you to vary the order of the sentence. So some sentences will have the verb at the beginning in the ing form. Some sentences will have the adverb at the beginning to make it a fronted adverbial. And some will have something else at the beginning. And you can choose what that is. And the adverb and verb will appear later on in the sentence. All right. Thank you, Year 4. I'll see you tomorrow.